When a match is over, do you ever sit around saying, man, my draws were good, my reloads were good, I got all my points, where am I losing time? Maybe this will help you out. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode three of Making A Class. On this episode, we're going to talk about transitions. Now, what do I mean by transitions? What I'm talking about is moving from target to target to target to target. That time from breaking the, the last shot on target one and your first shot to target two. Okay, that's what we call the transition. Now, Again, I'm not gonna talk about necessarily how to transition fast, but rather it's the ideas that are slowing us down because of the execution. So me as a beginner shooter, as my B-class shooter, which is where I plateaued at, one of the things that was uh, brought to my attention was the concept of moving through recoil. So we talked about in the last episode how we could do multiple things through recoil. Right? We could reset the trigger and we could prep the trigger all while the gun is recoiling and we can't do anything. We can't break another shot while the gun is out of battery. So we're able to increase the number of things that we do during a process where there's nothing we can do. Right? Well, using recoil to our advantage, we are able to shave transition time down a little bit. Now, here's what I'm talking about. is As a B-class shooter, what I noticed that was happening to me was that I would break the shot, the gun would recoil, and then I would drive the gun back to the target that I've just finished engaging before I would start the transition. Why was this happening? Well, mentally it was happening because I never fully confirmed with my sights that it was a good hit. So what I would do is I would break the shot, I would drive the gun back to the target, and in the time of that recoil, I was looking to see, does that target have a two holes in it? Or do I need to send another one? Once I confirmed, okay, yep, that was a good hit, then I started the transition process. Well, what if we were able to confirm with the sights and when they lift off that it's a good hit? What could we do? Well, through recoil, we can begin that transition process. So think about that. If it takes an extra tenth of a second to drive that gun back to the target we've just finished engaging before we start the movement, we could be saving, again, a tenth of a second per transition. Or maybe even more. I'll tell you what. Let's watch these two video clips showing the difference between breaking the shot and bringing my sight back onto that target before starting the transition versus transitioning through recoil. And let's see how much time I'm actually wasting. Now, as you can see in those two videos, especially when you put those numbers side by side, there is a lot of time that I'm losing by bringing the sights back down on the target that I'm done engaging before starting the transition versus allowing the transition to happen through recoil. Now, let's go back to our imaginary match for a moment. We talked about how it's a 300 round match. Each stage, there's 10 stages, and each stage has 14 paper targets and two pieces of steel. That means that every stage has a total of 16 transitions. So 16 times 10 stages is 160 transitions. And if you multiply that by one tenth of a second, that's another 16 seconds that we've now freed up. 
It's another 16 seconds that we've taken off of our shooting time, and yet it had nothing to do with shooting. All it had to do was starting the process of moving the gun to your next target a tenth of a second faster. So, if we combined moving the gun a little bit faster from target to target by a tenth of a second, versus, or and, and we add to addition that, um, the tenth of a second that we're able to save off of our split times because of us combining the uh, recoil with the trigger reset and prep, we're now at 46 seconds saved on a 300 round, 10 stage match. Think about that, 46 seconds. And just think, we're not even done yet. I've still got more things to bring to the table. So stay tuned for the next episode of Making A Class with John McClain.